In a Superman action comic from January 2013, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson appears in the story in which he determines that Superman's home planet of Krypton orbited the red dwarf of LHS 2520 in the constellation Corvus some 42 light years from Earth. Tyson assisted DC Comics in selecting a real life star that would be an appropriate parent star to Krypton and picked the star in Corvus which is also the mascot of Superman's high school, the Smallville Crows. Planet Krypton, however, has had various stories through the ages. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're going to use Superman's home world as an excuse to look at the interesting but little known constellation of Corvus the Crow, which coincidentally is one of my favourite animals. So let's get to it. In the first feature length Superman film in 1978, Krypton was depicted as a planet with stark bluish white terrain of jagged frozen plateaus under heavy dark skies. It was said that this planet was threatened by their sun turning into a supernova. Jor-El unsuccessfully attempted to persuade the Council of Elders to immediately evacuate the planet. The planet is destroyed when the red supergiant Rao becomes a supernova. So let's indulge the story. How could this be the case? And if in fact, Krypton is now thought to be in orbit around a red dwarf star in the Corvus constellation. Corvus itself depicts a raven perched on the back of Hydra the water snake. Four brightest stars, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon and Beta Corvi, form a distinctive quadrilateral asterism in the night sky known as the Sail. With an apparent magnitude of 2.59, Gamma Corvi, also known as Gierna, is the brightest star in the constellation. It is an aging blue-white giant of around four times the mass of the Sun. Around 154 light years from Earth, Gierna is a giant star of spectral type B83 and is some 355 times as luminous as the Sun. It has largely exhausted its core hydrogen and began expanding and cooling as it moves away from the main sequence. We already mentioned the fictional Rao star in the early films was a red supergiant, so it would seem Gierna, or Gamma Corvi, is a little early in its life cycle to be that particular star. Another interesting star in Corvus is the young star of Eta Corvi that has been found to have two debris disks and seems to be surrounded by a swarm of comets, as seen in this artistic depiction. Marking the raven's right wing, it is a yellow-white main sequence F25 class star This is around 1.52 times as massive and 4.87 times as luminous as the sun. In many ways, it's similar to the star of Procyon. At 59 light years distance from our solar system, many believe that the star system itself may be experiencing a late heavy bombardment, much like our own solar system did in its infancy, which makes it a very intriguing place to pay attention to. We know that as many as three star systems in the Corvus constellation have exoplanets, and a fourth planetary system is unconfirmed, so although it is a relatively small constellation, it does make up for it in exoplanet discoveries. Not only in the Superman films, but Corvus was also recognised as a constellation by several Polynesian cultures. In the Torres Strait island culture for example, Corvus was the right hand holding a kupa fruit of the huge constellation Tagai, which also depicted a man fishing. Covering 184 square degrees and roughly 0.5 of the sky, Corvus ranks a lowly 70th of the 88 constellations in area. Bordered by Virgo to the north and east, and Hydra to the south, with Crater to the west, its position in the southern celestial hemisphere means that the whole constellation is visible to observers south of 65 degrees north. With the constellation's borders, there are 29 stars brighter than or equal to magnitude 6.5, and although none of the stars are particularly bright from Earth, they do lie in a dim area of the sky, meaning the quadrangle asterism is easy to distinguish. Indeed, Geta or Gamma Corvi and Delta Corvi serve as pointers towards the more famous blue giant binary star pairing of Spica. The star TV Corvi is an interesting addition being a dwarf nova, this means it's a white dwarf and a brown dwarf pairing sharing very close in orbit. Going back to the Superman theme, it is also interesting as we know that the supernova explosions do not usually leave behind white dwarf remnants, and neither is TV Corvi surrounded by a nebula, so we can probably rule out this star as well as a potential Krypton harbouring system. The question of what would have happened to the brown dwarf would also remain unanswered. The raven's breast is marked by Beta Corvi, and its proper name is Kratz. A star of magnitude 2.7 located around 146 light years from Earth. Roughly 206 million years old, Kratz is around 3.7 times as massive as the Sun, 
and it too has exhausted its core hydrogen and expanded and cooled to a surface temperature of around 5100 Kelvin, very similar to our own Sun, and is a yellow bright giant star of spectral type G52. If our Sun were suddenly to become a giant star, but retain its surface temperature, it would be very similar to Beta Corvi. As we already mentioned, three star systems in Corvus have confirmed planets. HD 103774 is a young yellow-white sun-like star some 181 light-years distance from Earth and thought to be orbited by a Neptune-sized planet every 5.9 days in 2013. HD 104067 is an orange dwarf 69 light-years distance from Earth and around 80% as massive as the Sun, so a bit like Alpha Centauri b also known as Tolyman, and orbited by a planet 3.6 times the mass of Neptune around every 55 days. The white yellow dwarf star of WASP-83 also has a planet as massive as Saturn that orbits every 5 days. It was discovered by its transit across the star in 2015. A fourth star system also has an unconfirmed planet. For these and other reasons, Corvus would not be a bad destination for us to target for interstellar journeys in the far future. Looking back from the Krypton planet in orbit around the red dwarf of LHS 2520, our Sun would be an extremely faint star of apparent magnitude 5.29. Rigel and Canopus would remain amongst the brightest stars in Krypton's sky, alongside Sirius, which would still remain fairly bright at around plus 1.77 apparent magnitude. It seems interesting then, if we continue the Superman allegory, that those on Krypton would not likely really be drawn to our Sun, and it would not in any sense be a remarkable star in the skies of Krypton, much like the Corvus stars are mostly unremarkable in our own skies. Superman fans may argue for the fictional Rouse star, or prefer Neil deGrasse Tyson's Red Dwarf as Krypton's home. Either way, our sun would not be a prominent star in their skies. The question of why Superman would have even come here in the first place remains mostly unanswered. Perhaps one day the legend will reveal a little more. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further, you can consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. And thanks to those of you that have already done so. If you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below, and it could just be your idea that shows up next week. Take really good care of yourselves, and look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.